Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. It is a good day. It's a day the Lord has made. I'm rejoicing, being glad in it. I need to let you know there's something special about you. And I know you feel special. I know the ministry makes you feel special. I know your pastor makes you feel special. But I retired December 31st after 32 years of being a senior pastor in this city. Some of you may remember us from Kitty Cat Daycare, Change Academy. I founded Change Academy, rebuilt Kitty Cat Daycare, and uh, it was First Christian Assembly, and then God moved and breathed new life in it. It became new life about eight years ago. So we've had a wonderful time in this city. I made one mistake in my ministry that I'll admit to, and that is I chose not to remarry while I was a pastor. I was chicken. I needed to be delivered. I've been delivered. But 32 years as a single pastor is a lot. And uh, God allowed me to pass the baton. I asked him for one year of doing nothing. <laughs> I just didn't want to do anything. I mean, I, I want to be a witness for the Lord. Didn't mean that I wasn't going to tell folks about Jesus. Wasn't, didn't mean I wasn't going to pray. But I, I, I didn't want to do this for one year. I just wanted to replenish. I've been blessed. I'm a full-figured woman, and I have no medical problems. That's kind of unusual. And I wanted to get my body together and give it back to him as my gift to him, as my part of my thank you for using me and allowing me to serve. And two days before we had the meeting, God began to stir in my heart a message. And I said, nah. I always knew when I was supposed to preach somewhere outside my pulpit because God would always give me messages. So when the invitations came, I knew it was his will and not mine. I couldn't be used because God was using me. So I didn't go just because they were my friends or you know how we do. Then when I came to the meeting and I sat down, I knew. And can I tell? He wrote the date down on a piece of paper and shoved it at me. <laughs> and it's like, oh, Lord. And I knew. So I didn't tell him I had to pray about it. I already knew. So there's something special about you. I said, there's something special about you. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I release myself to you, Holy Ghost. You speak only what thus saith the Lord. My body is your temple. Use me. Speak only what God has for this house that your kingdom may come and your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Say, who is she? Look at somebody and say, who is she? The word of God in the book of Luke, the first chapter, 26 through 37th verses, tells a story about Mary. And while this scripture text may not be what you would think a Mother's Day message would be, I want to focus on two scriptures. 
verse 28 and 29. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. This is the interna New International Version. In verse 29, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered, what kind of greeting might this be? You're church folks, and you know this scripture. It is about a woman who was called of God at a very young age to do something very, very challenging. When we look at the body of Christ today, mothers today are called of God to do some very challenging things. Pew Research, Barna Research, describes Christian women today as falling in an age category, the preponderance of Christian women fall in the baby boomer category. Unlike when I started my ministry, it was very different. Baby boomers are getting up there now. They describe Christian women, us church folks, as being fairly secure. We feel good about our lives. We're being used in leadership. About 45% say that they have an opportunity to serve in leadership. We feel good about who we are. We feel good about what we do. I'm saying this because 10 years ago, that wasn't the case. The most insecure group of women on the face of the earth were Christian women. Now, all of a sudden, we feel like we got it going on. Are you with me? And they also tell us, the researchers, that mothers feel the most stressed. Christian mothers feel the most stressed and yet the closest to our children. By about 60%, 60 to 70% of the teens prefer going to the mama to talk, prefer asking the mama for counsel, prefer seeking the mama for prayer. We'll divulge their darkest secrets to the mama. Yeah. 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 So today, mothers in the body of Christ are the most important ingredient. We know babies depend upon us yeah. till they get 18 months and then they tell you no. But now what we realize in the kingdom of God and in terms of kingdom building, women play the most vital roles. Interestingly enough, they don't always get the opportunity to lead as pastors. They aren't always the word givers, but they see themselves as playing vital leadership roles in the kingdom of God. That leads to the greatest stress levels. So women, in particular mothers, are having the most serious medical problems, emotional problems, and the highest stress levels. So I'm speaking to you stressed at, no. I'm speaking to you blessed women, as well as you men and young folks about the status of the church because the preponderance of the church happens to be women. And the preponderance of today's church in 2019 happens to be women who fall in the category of baby boomers. So when we talk about building our ministry for millennials, and we talk about building our ministry around other generational groups. Are we getting it right? 
Our scripture text helps us to understand that God chose a young woman by the name of Mary who was espoused to a man named Joseph. She was in her teens. She was from the line of David. You know the story. I know there's good preaching and teaching in this church. That she was asked to do something that was challenging. Never been done before. Would never be done again. (laughs) Glory to God. She was asked at a very tender age. I looked at the young lady that sang and I thought, wow. She just sort of confirmed my message. At a very young age, she was asked to make a difference. She was asked to be used as an empty earthen vessel to die to her flesh, to die to her concerns, to die, huh? To the issues of life that come with being pregnant and unmarried. Even greater than that, she was asked to hear God's voice through an angelic host and trust him. I've walked by faith for 32 years. There was no guarantee anyone would ever come to church. There was no guarantee that anyone would ever enroll in our daycare or our school. So I've lived on faith for 32 years and a half years hired staff 45 full-time employees for 27 years of my ministry I laid down every night knowing I had to pay them knowing their families depended upon their income I was blessed 50% men 50% women multicultured I'm talking about what God will do. While other people are laughing at you, asking, who is she? (laughs) Who does she think she is? Mary, at a a teen, had a divine visitation. I know you've heard this. And had to trust God. Didn't say he afforded her any time for counsel. There was a decision that had to be made on the spot. An answer that had to be returned into the heavenlies. She had to know that she knows. That she knows that was an angel and not a demon. That was the will of the Father. Because it don't make no sense. God's not going to tell a teenager to get pregnant. That ain't God. Hallelujah. God don't work like that. We look at what God calls other people to do. We say, I ain't never seen nothing like that before. That ain't God. God used her to do something that had not been done would not be done and has not been done since and he gave her but a moment to process is this God what's my man gonna say I almost got him down now oh y'all don't think like that Y'all ain't got that on your mind. I got a good one. He named Joseph. He fine. He employed. Him love me. Him want to spend the rest of his life with just me. Am I going to lose him? (laughs) 
I want to talk about four things that she had to go through in that moment. First thing is she had to think about her relationship with God. I love him. I'm I'm devoted to him. I believe in him. I follow him. I obey him. I've never met a demon that would ask that of me. Because demons don't talk about what the Holy Ghost is going to do. So as I go through my spiritual filter of trying the spirit by the spirit, I got to accept that this is the voice of God. And I got to believe that he loves me. And there's something supernaturally divine in what he's asking me to do. <laughs> if he's asking me to, con- huh? yeah, yeah. to conceive a baby by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And that baby's going to be the savior of the world. Yeah. I don't know nobody that can lie like that. Yeah. 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 I can think of a thousand other women that huh? Yeah. a demon would go to and tell her that. But God sent an angel. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are thee among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Jesus. Hmm. Well, if he can get an angel to me. He can get an angel to my man. Joseph is more mature than me. I know Joseph knows the Lord. Because he's my man. And he wouldn't be if he didn't know him. So Joseph's going to be my confirmation. Are you with me? I don't doubt that if God can convince me, God right this minute must be working on. If God wants my womb, he has my whole body. The Holy Ghost is a gentleman. He's just letting me know what's about to come down. As God said, so shall it be. Second thing, she thought about Joseph. She thought about her relationship with Joseph. She thought about his manhood. She thought about how he would be treated huh, in the city gates. He thought about, she thought about whether he would be respected or not. She, processing, realized she could handle the persecution. But my man, I love him. I want them to esteem him. Huh? I'm part of what should bring him respect and honor. And I don't want to bring him any disrespect by what God called me to. Uh, but if he called me, he called him. Because before he could ask me, he had to ask him. And when he asked him, and he gave permission for him to become one with me, and for me to become one with him, the calls on him just like it is me. I know him. When the angel comes, he's going to know who it is. When the angel speaks, he's going to feel the presence of God in the voice of the angelic host. And when the angel finishes, he's going to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Abosa. Yes. Didn't take her long to think on 
Huh? How it would be with Joseph. Third consideration she had was Jesus. My bloodline's right. Come from the line of David. I know what the scripture says about when the Savior's gonna come. I know my genes are right. That means I know I'm gonna carry the baby to full term. That means I can live a sanctified, purified, perfected life. That means in the night hours, huh, when the persecution has been heavy, I'm not going to lay in Joseph's arms and want him to rock me for a little while to comfort me. But I know once that seed's been planted, the anointing is going to wax strong in me. And I'm going to be able to walk with Joseph. Celibate. And I'm not going to have to worry about Joseph talking about, baby, I'm a man. You know I have needs. Because he's more anointed than I am. He's got to lead this household. He's got to father our son. He's got to disciple our son. He's got to teach our household. He's got to bring the presence of God in our household. He's got to cover us in prayer. He's got to cover us in the blood. He's got to anoint our heads with oil. Cast out demons and cover us with the blood of God. And so I know that I know that I know he's anointed to serve. Because my God is an awesome God. He's awesome in all his ways. And the Savior will have no cleaner temple to be in. I will never hinder the presence and the power of God to enter into my womb at any time. I'll stay in the presence of God. I'll walk in the will of God. The fruit of my lips will give thanks and praise to God. I'll think on the things above and not on the things of this earth. I'll decree and declare the goodness of God. And I'll pray without ceasing. I'll fast if necessary. I will allow myself to be cloaked in prayer um, by his father to be Joseph. Jesus will have the upbringing that he's supposed to have. The fourth thing. She thought about the church. Church are the people. What the people going to say? Bible says if you cause your brother to stumble, you're held accountable. Are you with me? What the people going to do? How the people going to handle this? Because if they put their mouths on me, thank you. I don't glow, I perspire. This will never be the same, my brother. I just have to replace it. (laughs) It's already changing colors. (laughs) I don't want the people to sin. I don't want the people to doubt God. I don't want to make God look bad by my testimony. I don't want my mama and daddy to feel bad. I don't want my kinfolk to be ashamed of me. But if God covered me, and if God covered Joseph, then God's got his army covered. That's not my work. My work is to do the will 
of the Father. I'm considerate and I'm compassionate because I love my brothers and sisters. But the work of the Holy Ghost will take care of them. I walk by faith. Joseph walks by faith. Faith is contagious. When they see the provision of God, they'll know it's the vision of God. And they'll follow. Mary had to go through a self-examination. Those four categories. Before she knew who she was. See, at the beginning, before the angel came, she knew who she was. She knew where she was going. She knew what her life was going to be about. But now that the Lord spoke, I am what he spoke. I am what he spoke. I'll do what he spoke. I believe what he spoke. I'll live what he spoke. I'll testify what he spoke. You didn't hear me. When the Lord speaks, heaven responds. You might want to act like you didn't hear him. But the heavenlies did. And things are set in motion. Huh? And the very power of the word of God put you in position. It changed her mind. The angel, when he spoke, changed Joseph's mind. And without argument, without deliberation, they yielded and became one in the spirit, one in their faith, one in God, and yet remained celibate. Oh, I know y'all are getting hung up on the celibacy. Don't. They were so locked in on the fact that God honored them with such a challenge. They became awestruck. Can I tell you, when you're in awe of God, that means his rhema, his rhema is upon you. That means his presence and power has overtaken you. And it isn't a fly by night thing. It ain't when the music stops, the anointing stops flowing. It ain't that. I said, it ain't that. It ain't when you run out of gas and your legs can't cause you to dance no more that the anointing stops. It ain't that. When you're cloaked in his presence, it is your life. What am I saying to you? I'm saying he prepared Mary. Because once that thing got set in motion, once she conceived, yes, folks talked. But the first life experience he allowed her to have, listen to me, is an affirmation. He sent her to her cousin who was pregnant. (laughs) The baby in her cousin's womb leaped at the presence of the seed of Jesus in her womb. There was a confirmation. And Elizabeth said, how can I be so blessed? (laughs) Woo! (laughs) That the presence of the woman who carries my Savior in her womb is with me. He allowed her to stay with Elizabeth and be affirmed and discipled for 90 days that was a training ground older women are to teach the younger women don't keep your mouth closed I don't care how they look at you some of them same little heifers that came through the door at my church I can call them that I was once one. My dresses were hiked up. I wore hot pants. I partied hardy. 
I sinned, but I got delivered. So I know who can be delivered. And it didn't just take the mouth of the women. I like what he said. They're witness. I watched them. And I followed the ones that walked what they talked. How am I doing for time? Now, it's time? Okay. And so, uh, I'm winding up. Mary found out who she was in those 90 days. Mary realized, and we all realized, she had to go through some tough times. Not just while she was pregnant, but after. Her son rose up at 12, disappeared on him. When they found him, don't you know I have to be about my father's business? When he got in the heat and the passion of his ministry, huh? She and his siblings showed up. He said, who, are, who is my mother? Who are my brothers and sisters? Huh? He looked like he was denying them, didn't he? When he was at the wedding of Canaan, he challenged her. <laughs> One point he said, don't touch me. I've not yet what? So everything that went between them after all of her sacrifice didn't feel good, didn't make her feel good, didn't affirm her. But she held on to the faith that allowed the seed to be planted in her and grow. She walked by faith uh, and not by sight. Huh? She trusted the challenge God gave her. And she knew until he left that earth, or she did, that was her son. She taught him. She discipled him. She prayed over him. She bound up his little wounds. She did everything that a mama was supposed to be. Huh? All the while trusting and knowing, even though he's going to be greater than me, huh? that is yet my seed. That is yet my son. Huh? And as much as I love my husband, that's not my husband's child. That's God's. What am I saying to you? Do you know who you are? You ain't who your last name says. You are the seed God planted in you. When he asked the question, huh, and the people couldn't answer, he said, those who, that are in the will of the Father are my mother and my brothers and sisters. Do you know the will of God for your life? I've never been challenged more than I have in the last year. What do you mean retire? What do you mean pass the baton? You, you still going strong. Why are you doing that? A demon has deceived you. No. My name ain't Mary, it's Madeline. But I had my own divine visitation. Told me to go back to school and get a doctorate degree. I argued. Why in the heck do I want to do that at this point in my life? He has another plan for me. Do you know the will of God for you? Huh? Do you know your purpose? Huh? It changes. I said it changes. Just because you knew it at 20 don't mean you know it at 30. Just because you knew it at 30 don't mean you know it at 40. Just because you knew it at 40 doesn't mean you know it at 50. Just because you knew it at 50 don't mean you know it at 60. God is yet repurposing each and every one of you women. And it's time for you to look back over your life. Look at your relationship with God. Is it fresh or are you operating on years past? Look at your relationship with your circle of love. Are you so focused on keeping your man? Are you so focused on pleasing? Are you so focused on what other folks are saying? That you've allowed that to influence what you do, where you go, and how you do it? The church is in your hands. The church is in your hands. I don't care whether you don't get to preach. I don't care whether you don't get to teach when you want to teach. The church is in your hands. Who you talk to, how you talk to them, who you disciple, how you pray, when you pray. 
what you pray. The church is in your hands. Mary, a little teenage girl, had the Savior in her womb. Who are you carrying? What's in your womb defines who you are. Every last one of you is pregnant with a miracle. May not be your own. So don't hold on to it because it ain't yours. He'll do double for you what you release out of your mouth for someone else. If you're here today, male or female, if you've not examined yourself to see where you are with God, where you are with His Son, where you are with those in your circle of love, where you are with your immediate family, and you got convicted, even if you don't want to stand, move your legs and get up. I don't know what time it is. Is it time? Okay. Right where you are, come on. I'm going to pray a quick prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we're standing today. Not because of God, but because of God. We've been convicted today. We're pregnant. And we know it. We need to ask for forgiveness, for operating on old anointing, old purpose, old vision. We release you to open up and let the power of God renew, revive, and refresh. We thank you. We receive your touch. We receive our new assignments. And we'll walk in faith until they're complete. In Jesus' name. Amen.